This is John Spatero, Judge John Spatero, Boston Marathon runner on Sports Close Up. Welcome to Sports Close Up on Armstrong. I'm Gary Clark, Mike Fiorello. The sign we'll get to in a minute. First, the Honorable Judge John Spatero uh, from the Crawford County Common Pleas Court is also a runner. How long have you been running? Well, probably since I was a kid. Really? Uh, sure. Uh, Let me ask you a question, John. What do you think about when you run? Because that's why it, I quit running. I can't run because I can't think of anything. <laughs> it varies. Uh, some runs I just focus on enjoying the experience of running. Other times, I'll, for the long distance runs, it, there'll be times when I'll have an audio book that I'll listen to. Hmm. Infrequently, I'll listen to music, but every now and then I'll listen to some music. What, no, what's your what's music? Uh, what you do I think to? about? I, you know, just yeah. all kinds of things run through my mind. Yeah. Uh, sometimes uh, I'll occupy my thoughts with cases that I'm involved in and what to anticipate or how to manage them. And Sometimes and it's some paper matters. you got to write for the some yeah. decision you got to write sure. or whatever. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, what, sure. When did you start running marathons? My very first marathon was in 2007. Wow. Yeah. You're in Meadville? Or? Yeah. So, uh, no, it was in uh, Erie, Prescott okay. Marathon. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's go back a little bit. Sure. When I first started running, I was a kid. That's what I did. Yeah, so, I yeah, so okay, let's go back to that. Let's go back to being a child. Run away from my mom. Run away from your mom <laughs> like that. <laughs> Oh, it seems like judges are like that. Oh, okay. I mean, that's you're supposed born to do and that. raised where? I was born in Clearfield, Pennsylvania. Clearfield, PA. yeah. Okay, and, and then um, well, that explains it. What else are you going to do by running yeah, really Clearfield? Clearfield? What else is there to do? <laughs> well, but my folks moved away fairly soon after oh, okay. I was born. Where did they and, move? Uh, Cincinnati for a while, and then most of my youth was in central Pennsylvania. We lived okay. in Camp Hill and then later in Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. Oh, sure, okay, down near yeah. the Harrisburg area. Yeah. So uh, that I, I do remember now. Yeah. When, when and then you I graduated were... from Cumberland Valley High School. Okay, and then where'd you go to college? Edinburgh. So that would be how you got here. That's how I got here. And that's how you met your wife? I met my wonderful wife at Edinburgh. And she's a sweet I... lady, too, she by is. the way. She yep. is. Best decision I they ever don't, They don't get better than that, John. That's right. You married well. I did. Um, so you went, what year did you graduate from Edinburgh? I graduated twice. I graduated in 1975 <laughs> okay. with a degree in history, and then okay. later in 1977, I graduated with a master's degree in political science. Okay. All so right. what did you do before you went into law? Well, I was fortunate. While I was getting my master's degree, I served an internship as the administrative assistant to the city manager in Meadville. Mm. And Who was the city manager led, then? That, Blaine Hines. Oh, boy, yeah. that's been a, that goes back yeah, a few years. Yeah, it does, okay. 1976. Yeah, okay. And that led toward my having some opportunity to see attorneys, and then I applied to law school mm -hmm. and was admitted and started my law school career in uh, 1977. And where did you go to law school at? I went to Ohio Northern University. Mm -hmm. Ohio Northern, I'm trying to remember what their nickname mm -hmm. is. The Polar Bears? Polar Bears, yeah, yeah that's right. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's kind of my. <laughs> you know it all. It's what I do. <laughs> I, no, I know damn little, George. That's the only one of the few things I know. <laughs> so then you're attorney for a while, right? That's right. He was right. solicitor as well. Yeah. Right. Uh, my, my legal career. Yeah. Well, yeah. I graduated. Uh, I was able to graduate early. I graduated in 1979. Passed the bar in 1980. Okay. Was in private practice until I was elected judge in 2001. I was trying to remember uh, back also, the year you were elected judge. Yeah, I remember that yeah. campaign very well. You were well. on my committee. I was on John's those, committee. And we did. A, we had a lot of fun doing that. We was, did. Oh, that yeah. was the most. Uh, when, the day we had our first meeting, I realized you were going to win because there were so <laughs> many people there that I knew. Uh huh. You know, from all walks of life that came came out. And John was at the time was also the solicitor for the right. for the party, and he was yeah. uh, had done a lot of work for a lot of people over the years. He was an easy candidate. And every time you needed him to ask him to go somewhere, he was there. I was. And John, so, you, you also, if I remember, you served on the Crawford Central School Board for a while, correct? Yeah, Did you was, really? <clears throat> yeah, I served a term on the Crawford Central right. School Board. I was an assistant district attorney on a part-time basis for about nine years, and I was Crawford County solicitor for about nine years. I was going to say, I remember you being You're also involved in coaching Little League softball. Oh, player. absolutely. You and yeah. I go back yeah. all yeah. those years yeah. coaching mm -hmm. soccer, well, softball. Yeah. And, yeah. And you coach soccer, too, once a in a while. A little bit, yeah. Get a free shirt, was all. Yeah. Yeah. 
<laughs> we got a lot of good stuff, but that was a charge of the equipment. There we are. <laughs> got all new bats on my team. Your team tended to always beat our That's team. That's it. Right? We had all the new equipment. <laughs> so, then, so then when did you start running your marathon? In the 80s, in the 90s? Well, uh, long distance running really began in, uh, in law school. Okay. Uh, I was on the track team in high school, and then there was a long period of time when I did no running whatever. And then running started to become popular again in the 1970s. Not again, but it became right. relatively sure. popular. Sure. And then I thought, gee, I think I'd like to go back to doing that. So I started running again around 1977. And then started running 5Ks and some 10Ks. And, and then um, <sighs> took some more time off. And then, uh, you know, we were talking about our kids. Right. And, and you had three daughters. I had three daughters. Who are? And, uh, their names? Yeah. Yeah. Marissa, yeah. Andrea, and Carly. She now remembered did, them all. Uh, no, did, oh, yeah. Did any of those no, three run distance with uh, you? No. Or? So, no. What, what, wait, 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 where, where are your but, three girls now? Well, uh, the oldest and the youngest, Marissa and Carly, reside in uh, Massachusetts. Okay. They both attended um, the pharmacy college, the Massachusetts oh, College okay. of Pharmacy and Medical Science <laughs> in Boston. Taking they care of you in your old age, won't they? That's right, yeah. Well, they know the drugs. So. Um, and, that um, took care of them because they had to pay all the bills to get them through all that. <laughs> pharmacy. Yeah. I have to admit. <laughs> and, uh, and the other they're, one? They're living together in Marlboro, okay. which is near Boston. Sure. And the middle daughter, Andrea, lives in town and married to a wonderful man, Travis Sheckler. Here? Yeah. And okay. you have a and grandfather. we have a granddaughter, four years old. And that's why, Gary, you see all the yeah. beautiful stuff here to bring. Sure, I see you got the toys yeah. out here. The, the I like that wagon. I really yeah, like that. Like, yeah, I'm not cool. surprised. <laughs> that's pretty cool. Looks, looks like the Sooner Schooner. Yeah, <laughs> it does. Now, your daughters, if I remember right, were pretty athletic themselves. They Marissa were. Was, Very were you an athlete in high school? Other than a running track, uh, no. I played some baseball. In, I was played little league in baseball, okay. but uh, never played on the. You were track. You ran track. Ran track. Yeah. Not cross country. Did not run cross country. I probably should have. In retrospect, uh, <laughs> it probably would have made more have sense. That, yeah, but, <laughs> but at the time, it didn't occur to me. I was happy. What, to what, and what was your specialty in track? I ran the half mile and okay. the two mile relay, uh, and I did okay. Nothing special. But you know, going from two miles and running a mile or two <laughs> to running twenty six point whatever. Oh yeah, twenty six point two. Yeah. 20, I mean, yeah. what whatever moves you to do that? Exactly. I mean that that's hard work. Well, it is hard work, and as I was describing to Mike, we were both involved with our children as they were growing up and very active in coaching, and then when my daughter, my youngest daughter, graduated in 2004, I found myself with some time that I did not previously have. So you weren't playing softball again yet, huh? Oh, I was still playing softball. Soft, still I played playing last softball. night. <laughs> you played back in the yeah. 80s, too, yeah, finally. You know, you're over 30, 30 though, yeah. I was, <laughs> not anymore. Okay. <laughs> yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> And so what happened was uh, I had this extra time and I started training for more things and I started with triathlons and I got in my head wow. that, you know, maybe I can run a marathon. And, and so I ran my first wow. marathon in, in 2007. I was 53 at the time. And remember thinking at the time, uh, around mile 22, when I could barely move my legs, I am never, ever going to do this again. <laughs> and then I have to mention, I have to mention two people. Mm -hmm. uh, Mark Ruttenberg. Sure. sure. And no Steve Rutt Bell. Mark Ruttenberg mm -hmm. played softball, and mm -hmm. I saw him during after one of the games, and he was he's just such an exuberant and mm -hmm. good man. Mm -hmm. And he was telling me how, John, uh, you've run a marathon. That means you're a marathoner. And if you get your time down to three hours and 45 minutes, you'll qualify for the Boston Marathon. And he said that with such excitement and exuberance that I thought, gee, I've got to try that again. So he, he runs by my house. He had a goal then. He so runs then by my goal. house every day. Oh, yeah. wonderful he, guy. Yeah, I know more. Yeah. And so, uh, so uh, based on his uh, encouragement, I then tried a couple more times. I qualified for Boston, and I owe Steve Bell a thanks for that because he helped pace me. And that's where I learned pacing. So is this... It's very important to learn that you pace yourself to, to get through the Well, sure, to get to 26 points. So is this the, 2009, yeah. the first time you qualified That's for, and you ran the Boston Marathon? That's my first one, Has, 2009. When you went there in 2009, they said there's some, is there a heartbreak hill they call it? Oh, yeah. What is that? What yeah. is it? I mean, obviously it's a hill, but why yeah. is it called it? <laughs> Historically, the reason for the name is because the Boston Marathon is a, is a, is a hilly course. Okay. And... Um, 
commonly you feel pretty good as you get to around mile 20, which is wow. uh, <laughs> between mile 16 and mile 20. You're, 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 you tend to feel relatively good because you're, a lot of it is, is, even though it's uphill, there's downhill. Okay. And so the idea of heartbreak is that a, a runner may think, gosh, I'm doing really, really well. And then you hit the Newton Hills, and the third of those hills is what they call Heartbreak Hill. And by then, you now have the remaining four or five miles of the race, and by then, it's, a lot of people are pretty whipped by the fact that I their imagine legs so. are so sore. By the third mile, I didn't so, stop and had something to eat. That's right. So when you <laughs> went there your first time and you ran a Boston Marathon, did you think you trained yourself good enough for the Boston Marathon? And were you nervous going into it? Yeah. I was, yeah, I was, actually. Yeah. I, I would I, think I, so. I it's the biggest myself. marathon yeah. we yeah. know of, probably. Right. I thought to myself that I really wanted desperately to finish the race and not end up in the medical tent. <laughs> <laughs> that makes sense. So uh, I, I was successful in that regard. Yes. Yeah, and uh, well, that's your question. Really high expectations. Yeah, yeah, I was, actually. Um, uh, I I learned from the first one mm -hmm. how to run it subsequently. My first marathon was uh, probably my worst time. Well, it was my worst time ever. Because the, the whole thing is new and so forth. It was new, and I didn't run it very well, and I probably so went too fast at the beginning. Yeah. You know. and, now, um, shoes. Is shoes important when you're running marathons, kind of sneaky as you have and so forth? Yes. and. It depends on who you are. Okay. Uh, some runners prefer more cushion. I learned over the years I'm better off with a lighter shoe. And uh, I've been using ASICs lately, and they seem to be doing pretty well. Now, how, how do you stay away from blisters? Do you get them from time to time? I've been fortunate. N normally, I don't, have, I don't have a problem with blisters. Before, large ra before a, 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 a long race, I will use an um, anti-chafing uh, cream to help prevent sure, blister, sure. blisters from developing. Very important if you're going to run in the rain. I've run a couple of marathons in the right. rain. Yeah. And very important. Now, how, how, how much do you run every day for, your, for training? I mean, you, when you I, I guess when you get ready for the marathon, then you train a little more. But what's your normal routine of running? When I'm not training, I run when I feel like running. And that's the best That's time. amazing. That's the best kind. Because you don't have to maintain it. Then. It's great. I, I had a, yeah. a five-mile run on Sunday that was just glorious. I went out to Colonel Crawford Park. It's a beautiful venue. The sun was shining. Those are the, those are the best. What, about when I, what I'm training, you have, to, you have to build up your mileage, mm -hmm. and then you uh, what they call taper. So you sort of like bring it down, and then, and then you position yourself at the time of the race to theoretically be in your optimal. And, and how long does it take you to get up to that? It takes about, to do it right, you probably should take four to, four to well, should probably take about eight weeks to bring it up to that level, <clears throat> and then you taper over the course of four weeks. Wow. Okay. And then in two At th least eight weeks. <laughs> two years <laughs> later, 2011, you go back to Boston. That's right. Why? Well, um, my uh, time in my 2009 wasn't real good. And, um, but I mean, like, nobody around here knows. I mean, you <laughs> ran, everybody's like, wow, yeah, you yeah. ran a voice of marathon. Yeah, yeah, you and Ruttenberg <laughs> ran the voice of marathon. Hey, we're, and I think Tom Hayden's uh, run it too, right? Uh, Tom Hayden has run okay. many of them. He's another one of my heroes. Right. Uh, and by then, I, I wanted to go back, and my children were living in Boston, and I learned so many lessons from 2009. And my, my time in 2011 was my best for the Boston. That was two hours and 45 minutes, three hours, both, three hours and 45 minutes. So I was very happy. Now, where are you guys at? Because I'm sure all the premier runners, they put them way in the front, right? Oh, yeah. You guys, like, way in the back, in the middle, like, trying to picture how many runners there are about. In a typical marathon, this year was a different. Was different. In, right. a, in a typical Boston, it's usually around 25,000 runners. That's a lot. I mean, that. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of. It takes a long a time to get to the start, yeah. then, yeah. from where you are, right? Well, it's very, it's very well organized, and you have to give these organizers a tremendous amount of credit for how well it's organized. Which, incidentally, I want to talk a little bit about security yeah, issue we, and how yeah, that is sure. different. But uh, it's very well organized, and you have, uh, you have a chip. Okay. So obviously, you can't get to the starting line the, the, when the right. gun goes off. Right. So your your time is really dependent upon the chip. Uh, and uh, so that's, you start that's wherever your, you are. Real I mean, time. Yeah, right. right? And then they have waves. So the first wave are the elite runners. Mm -hmm. Those are the folks that are 
right. gone. Extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. And then they have second, the third, Kenyans. fourth waves. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> the yeah. Kenyans yeah. are all out front. Amazing yeah. people. Absolutely yeah. amazing. Kip Joe Kenyo. Yeah, I, yeah I, remember, I remember them from marathoners for years. And of course, U.S. marathoner woman won this year in the women's bracket as yeah. well. Did, did she know it? Just come in second, maybe. Uh, I'm sorry thinking, to say I don't remember I'm it. I'm sorry though. to think that we had a, I think you're right. an American yeah. one this yeah, year. American yeah, American one. Yeah. Yeah. The male, for sure, yeah. Yeah, yeah. male. Yeah. Yeah. I guess female. I'm taking that back. She was it's a male American, but he moved here from one of those That's right, running yeah. countries. Well, you know, a yeah. U.S. citizen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he had a funny smell of name. But so smell it, name but then yeah. let's, let's get into yeah. then 2013, because we 2013. all remember what happened in 2013. You know, I want you to know, when I was sitting at my desk, John, and I, Saw it on the computer. I thought, you're the first person I thought of. And I said, "Geez, you know, John's there. I wonder, wonder what's going on. Uh, you know, tell us a little bit about what happened." Yeah. Where were you when things went awry? It began like any marathon. Uh, you have the normal jitters at the beginning, and then the race proceeds. And it was a. Um, it started out. The weather seemed pretty, pretty good. And then later on, it started to get a little cooler. And I remember um, endeavoring to try to pace myself. And I felt good at the end, as were other. Uh, you just can't help but feel exuberant at the end. Sure, uh, sure. Uh, but I felt exuberant all the way around. I felt good uh, mentally, and I felt good physically. I felt strong physically. And then I crossed the finish line. And of course, you're just so happy, and everybody's congratulatory, mm -hmm. and it's. Uh, it's just a wonderful feeling. And then you go through all these stations. Uh, first they see how you're doing, and then they give you some water, and then you get some food, and then they give you a, a blanket, a, 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 you know, a, a, a poncho, a, a type, poncho thing, yeah. type thing to keep you warm. Then I'm at the area where I'm picking up my uh, gear, and uh, the first thing, and I'm surrounded by other runners all doing the same thing, nothing, to, mm -hmm. nothing unexpected, and then all of a sudden, Bam! Very, very loud bam, and it just—it was startling. And so you—you you look in the direction of the bam, and and then and then there was another bam, real quick. And what I remember most graphically were the plumes of smoke, the the, the gray smoke that just was coming from two different locations, and it was over by the finish line. And how far away the finish line at this point were you? I'm guessing I was a hundred yards away, wow. about, about a football That's field away. Close. Um, I'm, I'm not very good with distances, sure. but um, I was at least 8 to 11 minutes away from the, the point at which the bombs went off. But the thing is, you didn't know. Sure. You didn't know it you was a know. bomb. Right, right. And so everybody's looking at each other and, what was that? What was that? Right. And one person said, well, maybe a generator blew. And then sure. another person said, that's no generator. And then it was almost surreal how, like a rippling effect, where you began to realize that was a bomb. Even, even though you hadn't been told it was wow, a bomb, you okay. just sort of rec realized mm -hmm. it. And my first um, mental imp uh, impression when that entered my consciousness was, oh my God, my, my family is there. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was really scary. Sure. It, it's, it's a feeling in the pit of your stomach that you is really difficult two daughters to describe. Were there, right? They were. And, and, um, and they'd be at the finish line to watch you. That's right. And then you, you saw people running, I'm sure? Well, where I was at, everybody was, there were too many people around me. Okay. <laughs> there wasn't any running. It was everybody just there. Okay. And I'm desperately trying to reach my family. And it was noisy and loud. And um, ultimately, uh, I did receive a text, and I knew my family was safe. And then one thing led to another, and we were able to catch up to each other. But that took, that took a little bit of time. But I, I was so relieved. When I had the text message and I, and I, and I knew my family was yeah. safe. Yeah. And then they, of course, important. same time, then they knew you were safe as That's well. That's right. Now, yeah. what, did, yeah. what did they do for you people that were like 100 yards away or whatever? Did security run after a while and direct you a certain way, or are you just pretty much on your own? No, I, w I was on my own, and I was so far away mm -hmm. that even when it, I began to recognize it was a bomb, uh, and after I reunited with my family, the main focus was to just you know get clear the area which is exactly what the police wanted us to do okay. clear the area mm -hmm. right and so um so where did I, you go 
Well, my daughter's boyfriend had an apartment in uh, Brookline, which was about okay. two miles away. Okay. So here you run the Boston Marathon. And run down two more miles. You get to go for a two-mile walk. A short two-mile walk, yeah. <laughs> um, but the whole time, uh, it, was, uh, it, was, it was one of the, you know, I didn't take any photographs, but I, I probably should have because it's, it, all I can go on is, is from my memory. But mm -hmm. you're walking along, mm -hmm. right. and you're walking quickly, and there's all these people, and everywhere you look, every you see emotion. Uh, there's bewilderment. There's people. There Much people different crying. than the first two times you oh, were there, my, obviously. Yes, oh, yeah. very much so. And and meanwhile, with the cell phones, you're you're, you know, people are reporting what what happened. Wow. And so the early reports were, of course, uh, without the full benefit of all the information. There was a bomb. People were hurt. Right. And it seemed the more you went. The, the the numbers of people be, became higher and higher. Yeah, as, and you yeah. got the same thing <clears throat> watching it. I started watching yeah. on TV at the in my office, yeah. and you could see it. Uh, it it expand how many people were injured yeah. in this thing. At first, that way, one or two people, and then yeah. soon, I have no idea how many That's there were right. total in yeah. the end. But there, it kept getting higher and higher. Well, there were 264 injured, and there were three who were killed. Right. Uh, one was uh, an eight-year-old child, and uh, yeah. that's the toughest thing yeah, for is. me to remember about yeah. the whole incident. But as we're going through, um, uh, the uh, Boston police were tremendous. Uh, they uh, took complete command of the situation. They directed traffic. They cleared the uh, intersections. There was an uh, unrelenting sound of sirens. And from that, you could figure out, notwithstanding what you were learning from the news, you knew this Something was more serious than right. just a few people getting yeah. hurt. And the, the ambulances were going through with um, great uh, speed. And was it was it that night that they caught him? Was it? It was it a while later? Oh, it was they, a few days later. Few days later. Yeah, later. I just remember. I, believe it or not, I caught, I, him, I caught him in a boat. I yeah. Oh, yeah. And I was. Well, and I, you know what? Yeah, I can tell I mean, you. One is yeah. alive. Yeah. I was sitting in the parking lot of Walmart, waiting for my wife, listening to it on Sirius Radio, listening mm -hmm. to the play-by-play -play right. mm -hmm. from the Boston yeah. TV station. Yeah. Yeah. Was there, it, that, and it was just a, and, and when you, and I, I, I must tell you this, when they announced he was captured, you hear cheers around the parking lot. Oh, yeah. right, so How about then, that? So Rightfully so. John, I mean, you, but you know, in Walmart and Meadville, yeah, yeah. you hear So you that. experienced yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then you decided to go back this year. I did. You almost had to go back. Did I, you know what? I had to. You had to. I absolutely Why? had to. I had to for so many reasons. <laughs> Mm -hmm. uh, every now and then I, I, I will say one of them, and it actually were several of them. Uh, and I know it sounds a little corny to say this, but I had to go back because I felt it was my patriotic yeah. duty to try to go back. Absolutely. Um, it, it was my little way of saying, uh, protesting I'm against the people who so, are going to do this. So you were part of country. the... Boston Strong saying, we're stronger than that. Absolutely. They're not going to... Well, that went, and that resonated around the country. Yeah. yeah. The Boston, Boston but Strong. But the Boston Strong rally cry yeah, was yeah. amazing. It was. Because you're not yeah, going to yeah. cancel our big event. That's right. No. Now, you had said that this year... Wait a minute, Mike. Like wait, more runners, right? Wait a minute. Yeah. Let, let me get back to... What are the other reasons? Oh, well, good, uh, good, the yeah. good people of Boston. Mm -hmm. And for the, for the sport of, of, of marathoning. All these people that work so hard to participate in this event and... Uh, and this is a way of supporting that continuing effort. So there what about all, your family? What did reasons. they think about you going back? I've been blessed with an absolutely wonderful, mm -hmm. supportive family. They were... Because if Kathy me. would have said no, the answer was no. <laughs> <laughs> well, but I, like, I can be that. convincing. Yeah. I, I did do trial yes, work. Yeah, you were trial. <laughs> I remember you being convinced as trial work, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but you're right. They I, supported her judgment is pretty good. She was probably the final set. So, John, I uh, all supported sure, you. I'm always supportive of now her. Now, you too. were saying more runners participated this year? Yes. The uh, Boston Athletic Association made certain that all those runners who were unable to finish were invited back. Wow. And I believe that. Uh, there was a greater interest in the race as well. Sure. And I don't know exactly how many additional runners participated. I believe it was around 10,000, but and I could be wrong on that. Holy anything. cow. And that's, yeah. that's an amazing day because the school's closed. If yeah. I'm it's Patriot Day. And the, Red Patriot Sox, day. the Red Sox play in the morning. At 11 o'clock. Right. And then yeah. the race comes. So everybody goes to, a lot of people see both. That's right. right? Yeah. I mean, it's that's amazing. Right. So yeah. what was it like this year? Was, was there more people attending to watch it and everything too? The sense I received as I'm running along, which yeah. is an amazing race, the number of spectators, 
the sense I received is that there were definitely more spectators. The cheers were much louder. The crowds were so effusive. And, and I'm already describing what they were effusive and loud before 2014. Yeah, right. Now in 2014, right. it they was were. as if they were trying to make a special point of demonstrating their support wow. for, the, uh, for the race and for the runners and for this country. Do, do you have to qualify every year for the Boston Marathon? You do, yes. And you do it through another marathon. That's correct, yeah. Now, yeah. what do you usually, what do you use the Presque Isle one that you use? I've done, uh, I, I've had qualifying times at various places, uh, Palm Beaches, uh, oh, that's uh, Pittsburgh. Oh, that's, <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 that's a nice place to run. I'm going to run. <laughs> you got to run. Like I said, we'll be homeless. Um, Mike will be homeless in Miami. Yeah. Yeah. You know? <laughs> <laughs> you know? Palm Beach in January. Yeah, in, January. Yeah, yeah, yeah. in the winter. That's yeah. Go to Palm to Beach and yeah. be, yeah. be homeless. Yeah. 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 Uh, but yes, and you have to, you have to have a have short Have you ever run in a New York marathon? I never have. Okay. Uh, I doubt that I will, yeah. uh, but you never know. Okay, so yeah. you was, wanted to say about security this year, and how well that was. It's 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 a uh, it's a uh, bittersweet experience because all the years uh, you've proceeded without the necessity of security, and this year, unfortunately, uh, there was quite a bit of security. Mm -hmm. But once again, I my hats off to the good people of Boston. They provided the security. They search the runners, not body search, but they made sure that you didn't have any contraband, that you weren't carrying uh, bags or anything like that. Sure. They were extraordinarily polite. They were very supportive. They were very understanding. I, I just can't say enough good things about the, the way this operation and, and went. And then we showed it in the beginning when we started. Get that the, out there. We'll the, see that the again. Great sign. We saw it was on TV. <laughs> That's right. Comes National. National, National TV. Television. That's right. This sign was on ESPN, if I'm not mistaken, Gary. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. And ESPN Rosa. did a thing about the Boston That's Marathon, right. and I, I saw did. your daughter holding the sign. I, right. I just started chuckling, and then my son-in-law sent me the picture from the TV, <laughs> saying, "Look, you told me that you knew this guy running." <laughs> yeah, yeah. There you go. That was and great. You saw it that night. What's that? You saw it that night when you got back. I saw it that night. I did. You must have been thrilled. You got the people in the black and gold. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah, yeah. It was great. So, so are we going to go back again to run again? Or you're not sure? I, By the way, the other side says go team Brigham. <laughs> yeah. What is that? <laughs> no, well, just, we're recycling. Recycling. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no problem. Um, I appreciate that. <laughs> with regard to the side, it, it is funny how the cameras always pick up the pretty girls. There you go. Uh, there you go. Carly, Smart. That's you right. Exactly. Sure. Um, in terms of returning again to the young Boston cameraman, Marathon, that's why. Yeah, they get, that's well, they, yeah, what even we old cameraman find that's <laughs> not Jeff, right? No, he's finally good-looking ones. But would, would you run it again, or you're not sure yet? I am not likely to run the Boston Marathon okay. again. I've done it four times sure. now. It is a. Uh, uh, it's expensive to go up there. Well, you have to well, stay, but uh, yeah. So you got to go up uh, there and, and take you know four or five days off. How was your time and, this year? I was happy with my time. I was under four hours wow. and uh, three hours and uh, 58 minutes, and I was happy with that time. Yeah. But what I was about to say mm -hmm. is it's a, it's a commitment that, right. as we were talking, training. Uh, there's the training, mm -hmm. and now that I have a granddaughter, sure. and my wife and my friends can attest to this, I do so much to try to spend my free time sure. with her. Good for you. That, That's right. um, that, um Generally, I'm sort of toning back the training, but we'll see. I don't know. I mm -hmm. really enjoy running. I now, love do you run. see some? Are you friends with people you meet there? You see from a couple of years ago and last year, you know people that run. I definitely know people that run. Unfortunately, I didn't run into them this year. Oh, okay. But uh, uh, Ross Prather, uh, of course, Mark Rattenberg. Mm -hmm. uh, no, but other, anybody other from folks. different areas that you've gotten to know just a little bit and you see. Uh, I have at various uh, marathons, but interestingly, not not Boston. Okay. Uh, I do have some friendships from uh, other marathons, but but not anybody that I met mm -hmm. and became friends with from Boston. Well, you kind of feel like when you when you get to a certain age and you have grandkids or whatever, yeah. you, you, priorities change for you too. They do change. You know, they and do. so here you are, and sitting yeah. in your, you know, in a in a beautiful home here in Meadville, and you've got a, you know good career, beautiful wife and kids. Now you got a granddaughter. Oh yeah. It's not not bad, huh? That's uh, well. You can blood. fix that side yard. You'll be in business. That's right. <laughs> What's up with that? Well, after we get done, we're gonna do some raking. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. and that'll happen. <laughs> I do. Seriously. It's been like that for a while. Well, you know, we did a lot of damage to that yard. <laughs> you put all new swing set in. Yeah, and that's, then that's a the granddaughter. Then a rain doll spring. 
and it and we had a tough spring. Yeah. But and how long, how long have we had the pool? Oh gosh, we've had the pool uh, since um, At least probably around years. 1999. You know, yeah. it's really yeah. nice back here because it's yeah. very private. It is. It's really. Nice. Wouldn't know it's even here yeah. when you when you drive yeah. by or whatever. Yeah. You're close to Crawford County Fair. Yeah, we are. You have we to walk, walk there. Tour, huh? where they, we, we go. To you could actually run to it, but. Yeah. <laughs> that too. <laughs> this is a pretty yeah. good deal you got going here, John. Yeah, this well, is. Thank uh, you. So tell me a little bit about being a jurist. Um, have you enjoyed being a judge? I very much enjoy being a judge. I want you to know I'm very proud of you. Um, no. When we went to work for you, I told a few people that he'll be a really good judge, and, and you have you have been. Well, you know, thank you very, very much. We're very pleased with uh, all of our judges here in Crawford County. I think all three of you guys are just really good people, and they're good friends. They're just people that, good ones. that are just in, in the neighborhood. They're, they're local. They're not living in some thing up on the hill somewhere. Right. Yeah. You know. Two older guys and one young guy as judges. <laughs> the redheads are Well, you know, I, I have more reservations about Stevens, but no, I'm just kidding. Mark's a good man. He is and a, good a Browns man. fan. And mm -hmm. a Browns fan. You know. But I'm not going to hold that against him. <laughs> <laughs> What's Judge Verdara? Is he a Steeler fan? Oh, I believe he's a Browns fan, too. I, 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 matter of fact, yeah. I'm sure that Tony yeah. is a yes, Judge Verdara, yeah, as Judge I call him. You know, right. and once they become judge, it's no longer John. Or Mark, it's your honor or judge, you know, it's just, it's because, you know, that's an earned thing. And no, you don't earn it by an election. You earn it by sitting on the bench and doing the work, you know. And that's, you guys have done a lot of, a lot of work over the last several years. How I, much, I'm, how, I think I know the answer to this, but I'm going to ask it anyway. I'm pretty sure I know the answer. How much does common sense come into play to be a good judge? None. <laughs> otherwise, <laughs> otherwise, Stevens wouldn't be there. Besides his knowing, no, besides his great kidding. thing, you're good I'm, friends. Yeah, yeah. Besides, We're tight. Besides, besides his yeah. knowing the law and studying yeah. past yeah. things, how much is common sense? Seriously, common sense is pivotal. Uh, I uh, believe that the characteristics involve uh, experience, uh, common sense, the ability to maintain your temperament and to uh, do everything you can to focus on what's important. What's important is the safety and the benefit of this community, and that's, that's paramount. And we all look at the protection and safety and performing our responsibilities for our community as, as the main uh, focus of our work. Yeah. It's interesting you said and that. common sense is so important. Right. Yeah. You talked about temperament. Yes. I've known you for a long time. I think I know you pretty well. I, I, you usually keep an even keel all the time, and, and you're Italian. <laughs> and I'm Italian, so I want to know, how did, you get this, how did you get this even keel? I mean, your dad, your mom, or, what, you know. His wife. <laughs> well, I had an excellent upbringing. Yeah. yeah. And okay. uh, my mother's wisdom has resonated. It's nice to hear that, life. too. I had a yeah. good upbringing, yeah. yeah. I had a great childhood. But I mean, like, I you always, I when they great? It was, it was yeah. So that's what led you to the law and everything, because you kind of analyze everything before you react, you think? Certainly, yeah. Not you, everybody does it, that's yeah, what I'm asking. Yeah, certainly. You, 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 look at, you look at the situation as it exists, and I have feelings just like everybody else. Sure. And uh, there are times when I'll have cases that will mm -hmm. be uh, very disturbing. And that's one of the reasons I run, <laughs> to help work off sure. some of that right. frustration. And, uh, but the point is that I have to transcend that. My responsibility is to analyze the situation as dispassionately as I can and to make the best decision that I can based on the facts and the circumstances. And while it is perfectly okay to have feelings, that's not evidence, that's not something that focuses, it, factors in a decision. All right, John, you have been a very good judge, but a great citizen, and a bit of a hero here for running that marathon again the, the last time. And That's right. uh, we're very proud of you, and thank you for well, joining thank us. Thank you. We, we, the we, the real heroes are the good people of this judge country. Judge John Spatero, along with Mike Fiorello. Let's see the Italian, right? That's it's just it. out in the middle. It, yeah. <laughs> Separated you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Gary Clark for Sports Close Up on Armstrong.